Hey everyone, Road Breach here, and today we're taking a look at the Transformers Earthspark trailer and the sneak peek. This was something that I was itching to see. More advertising for Transformers Earthspark and a better understanding of what the show is going to be like. So without further ado, let's begin. Right off the bat, this animation looks really damn good, and I like that it goes for a more grounded aesthetic like Transformers Prime. Out of the more modern 3D Transformers cartoons, this is easily the best looking out of what we have currently. That's not to discredit Cyberverse Prime or this War for Cybertron trilogy, but I love how dynamic everything looks in this trailer. However, I do have one gripe with the art style, and that specifically has to do with Optimus Prime. I feel like his mouth plate is way too long. That in of itself wouldn't be too bad, but he looks very strange without it in this piece of promotional art that I found floating around. I've never had a problem with his mouth plate being retractable, but Optimus looks very strange without it here. I find it kind of funny that out of the many iterations of Optimus Prime, this is the one that I have a problem with that has a retractable mouth plate, which I think is a good segue into the character designs. Prime aside, the other Transformers we get to see here go for the evergreen aesthetic, where they closely resembled their original looks from the G1 cartoon. One old face that I couldn't help but notice is Bombshell in this scene. One thing that bugs me here is that we don't get to see a lot of the Decepticons. The Decepticons are either on screen for a split second, or in the shadows like Bombshell here. The other Decepticon that I could notice is Swindle, who is on screen for very short increments. Also, I'm adding this in after the fact, but you can see Megatron pretty well in this shot right here. Most of what the Autobots and humans fight here are these Arachnobats, which could be new Cybertronian lifeforms that were made up for this show. Although, there is a good chance that they may be made by this new human antagonist, Mandroid. Speaking of the humans, these human character designs remind me of Pixar, which is another good reason why I think this may just be one of the best-looking Transformers cartoons I've laid my eyes on. Pixar's human designs are really appealing, for the most part anyways, so it makes sense that they'd want to try and emulate that style. Except when it comes to the kid's mother, who does not have a bouncy caked up dump truck like Mrs. Incredible or Laurel Lightfoot. Although now that I think about it, she's more proportioned like Andy's mom from Toy Story 3. Another thing that I want to point out is the hair. Western CGI cartoons have mostly gone with a toyetic look when it comes to hair, but the hair on our human protagonists looks very real, which in turn makes this show feel grounded. And speaking of ground, the backgrounds look pretty good too. The wooded areas make me feel right at home, because I have lived by the woods a few times, and this rural fenced-in area with Bumblebee looks very good. Some of the more contemporary areas look alright, this particular area reminds me of Teardown. As for here, I guess this is a simulator room of some kind. I guess we'll have to see what this is all about later. As for the sneak peek, I feel there's a bit of context that's missing here. It starts with Robbie and Moe on a bridge, but Moe's bike chain pops off and Robbie ends up fixing it. I don't like how Robbie fixes the chain in the middle of the road. If your bike chain pops off, do not fix it in the middle of the road. That is a bad idea, because then you have a good chance of getting run over, especially since we then see a bunch of cars and a truck that end up driving onto the bridge. But as they run away, they end up running into arachnobats, which fire some rockets at the convoy and flip the truck over. Then the kids end up jumping off the bridge to avoid the truck crushing them, and the fall from the bridge looked pretty bad. These kids should probably have several broken bones after this, but they're actually fine. There's a bit of familial drama between Robbie and Moe, where Robbie is leaving to go off on an adventure, and there's nothing left worth staying for. My only guess for what Robbie means here is that he has angst for having to move to a new city. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see what happened prior to this. Though, if I were in this situation, I'd probably be more focused on the fact that some spider robots just fired rockets at a small convoy. After a literal screaming contest, they end up seeing a glowing cave and end up checking it out. Mo takes a rock to use as a weapon, which makes me question how strong she actually is. And after thinking there's nothing out of the ordinary besides the fact that this cave is glowing, she drops the rock, and Robbie says, Take it easy, John Henry. John Henry is an African-American folk hero who proved his worth by setting up a railroad faster than a machine, and ended up winning. I like the fact that they decided to reference something like this. If Transformers, BotBots, and SpongeBob can reference Nosferatu, then I have no issue with them referencing a folktale like John Henry here. But Mo dropping the rock breaks the ground, which takes them to a chamber underneath the cave where the earth spark sits. At least, that's what I think it is. Mo thinks it could be an egg or the eye of a dinosaur god. Robbie pokes it, and it falls off the rock it's sitting on. 
Robbie and Moe put it back, and it gives them these gauntlets, and awakens Twitch and Thrash, the new Autobots part of this show. This is probably what Optimus Prime was talking about in the trailer when he said, you're the first to be part of this world and theirs. The gauntlets also told the kids the names of Twitch and Thrash, so along with this shield that Moe uses in the new trailer, tells me these gauntlets are going to play a big role in the show. I gotta say, nothing else besides this is giving me a reason to try out Paramount+. Plus. And with that, I've said all that I've wanted to say about the trailer and sneak peek. Have anything to say about the trailer? Or the sneak peek? Disagree with anything I said? Let's discuss it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and gotta zoom.